Hi class, um, today we're going to be looking at chapter 6 and we're going to start with chapter 6 section 1. So um, if you are one that writes down the questions or wants to see kind of what we're going to be covering today, you can see that here. Introduction to chemical reactions. Um, first question, define chemical reaction. How do you know a chemical reaction has taken place? Number two, define reactants and products and where they are in the reaction. Number three, explain the conservation of mass and energy. And number four, explain the five reaction types. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the nature of chemical reactions and just kind of getting an introduction to what chemical reactions are. Um, a chemical reaction is when you take one or more substances that you start with and you change them into something new. So some examples are growing, ripening, decaying, burning. Burning is the one that most people think of with a chemical reaction. We'll be kind of practicing with these in class when we do some labs as well. You know a chemical reaction has taken place because you will see changes. So some examples of what those changes are are changes in color, production of a gas, and then this funny word here, precipitate, and that's when a solid is formed. It's a simple way to say it. Um, and you'll be able to see this in lab as well with one of the labs we're going to do uh, in the next couple days. So there's two parts to a chemical reaction. The first is the reactants, and these are the things that you start with in the chemical reaction. Um, and if you want to put it towards something that's kind of simple that you might think of on a day-to-day -day basis would be baking. So these are the things that you start with, the ingredients you start with. And then the products are what you end up with, the cake. Um, it's whatever you have after the reaction is done. And this is how it would look in a formula. So we have our reactants on the left side of the arrow and products on the right side of the arrow. Here's an example of sodium and chlorine, which we had already talked about last chapter. So sodium plus chlorine will produce sodium chloride. Now those twos that are in front of the sodium and the sodium chloride, those are... Um, coefficients and we're going to get to those later. An easy way that I've found to describe it is it's kind of like when you um, go to bake something you need to know how much of everything you need. So that's kind of what it's doing. It's telling you how much you need in order for the reaction to take place. So in a chemical reaction we have to prove that there's conservation of mass and energy. The law is that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. So we have matter and energy that are both conserved in a chemical reaction. This sometimes seems like it doesn't happen when you have a chemical reaction take place and you weigh it before or after, before and after. After sometimes seems like it has lost some of the mass. And what really happens is that some of it has left in the form of a gas. And so if you were actually going to check the conservation of mass, you would have to contain that gas and mass that out as well. So we're going to go over a few reaction types. There's five of them. The first is a synthesis reaction. And synthesis should make you think of creating. So you're taking two or more substances and you're combining them to make something new. You're making a compound. So they have this general form of A plus B produces AB. The way that I like to describe it and provides a general form for you to look at is element plus element produces a compound. So this would be kind of like baking a cake. You take your ingredients, element plus element, and then you produce one big compound or one big cake at the end. And that would be a good example. You don't need to write down all of these examples if you're looking at this as far as writing notes. Um, just choose one of the three examples. So there's this form, there's this real life example, or you can just put the general format in. So um, if we want to relate this to something that you might have uh, happen, especially near dance time, it's near, near homecoming right now, um, we can look at this as the little uh, cute guy here and the cute girl, and they're dancing separately, and then they decide to dance together. Kind of a silly way to think of it, but might help make you, might help you to remember it. 
Decomposition is just the opposite. So in this one, we have a compound that breaks down, and we end up with two or more simpler substances. So decomposition should make you think that anyway. It's things that are breaking down. And um, this is just the opposite of synthesis. So there's some examples here. Again, you can choose to write this example, AB, which is a compound, produces A plus B. Or you can do the real life example with water breaking down into the two gases, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And this process here is known as electrolysis. So electricity is added to water, and then um, it's an electric current, and then it produces hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Obviously, don't try this at home. <laughs> it is um, in a particular setup that you can do in the lab a safe way. So the other example that you can put in, if you like these better, compound produces element plus element. And again, that's just a general format. It helps you to identify the type of reaction. So if we're at the dance on this one, we see our lovely couple, and then um, they break up or they're mad at each other. So they're separate after the decomposition reaction. So again, a silly way to remember it, but maybe it'll help you. Combustion reaction is when we burn something. So kind of the key part here is that it has to use oxygen and a lot of times we're going to end up with water as a product. So here. Okay, and that's usually our format. So the way that you'll usually see it, if you see it, um, uh, this combustion reaction on a worksheet or something like that, is that you'll see it's an element or it could be a compound that we're breaking down or that we're burning plus oxygen. That's the key part. You have to have oxygen on the reactant side for in order for anything to burn. And it'll produce an element or compound plus water. Usually. There are some exceptions to how that happens, but this is the general format you might see on a worksheet if you have to identify it as combustion. I don't have a dance example for this one. All right, the next one is single displacement reaction. And this is where one element takes the place of another element. Um, so you can, again, choose which form you'd like to use. Or you can do the example that I'll write in here. So on this one, we would see element. There's an element by itself plus compound produces a separate element, one of them gets separated out, plus compound. Now, the thing that I often remind students is that you don't have to know what these elements and compounds are as we look across a real um, formula. If you just look for the simple um, characteristics of each side, you'll be able to identify the type of reaction. So in this one, we have compound element. On this side, compound element element. So that has to be a single displacement. It is also known as single replacement. So don't let that confuse you. So if we see this at the dance, we have our happy couple dancing and somebody steps in and takes um, takes over basically. And so now we had our guy here who was single. He wasn't dancing with anyone. He breaks into this happy couple and now this guy is going away lonely. So um, single replacement or single displacement. They traded. All right, and then our fifth type of reaction is a double displacement reaction. Often it produces a precipitate. Um, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. I think that shows up on a couple worksheets of which reaction sh um, produces a precipitate. And a double displacement will do that. So again, here's our examples. Um, you might look at this and go, oh, I have no clue what any of those are. And that's OK. You don't need to know what those are. Um, we're just looking for the format again. So it's compound plus compound produces compound plus compound. So in this one, you should have compounds everywhere. You should see um, that we've got two separate compounds on the left, and then they just trade who they're with. So on the right, um, instead of lead being with nitrate, lead is now with chromate. And they've traded 
partners, basically. So if we look at our dance partners, they've just traded partners on the reactant from the reactant to the product side. Everyone's still happy. This is just like you're out at the homecoming dancing and you trade who you're dancing with um, as you are uh, on the dance floor. And so that's a double displacement or double replacement. And that's the end of the types of reactions. So again, you have five types of reactions you need to be able to identify and then be able to explain how you know a chemical reaction is occurring.